The mid-70s were full of attempts to shock the public. You do it on the stage, in the artwork, and you do it in your music. You try to push the limits. We chose this artwork because it pushed album cover art to its extreme. That is a quote from Keith Emerson of the band Emerson, Lake and Palmer in reference to the infamous album cover of Brain Salad Surgery. Hello and welcome to The Album Man and today on Rock Art we are going to be covering Brain Salad Surgery by Emerson, Lake and Palmer. Brain Salad Surgery was an album that not only broke new ground musically with tracks such as Carnival 9, but it broke ground with its iconic, creepy, biomechanical cover and it was one of the first times that attention was given outside of Switzerland to the now well-renowned sci-fi surrealist artist H.R. Geiger. Hans Rudi Geiger was born in Schur, Switzerland in 1940. His father was a pharmacist, viewing art as kind of a breadless profession, encouraging him instead to follow in his footsteps and enter the pharmaceutical industry. But instead, Geiger rebelled, and he moved to Zurich in 1962, studying architecture and industrial design. His artistic career began in producing ink drawings and oil paintings, though this was not the style ni medium that he would become known for, since it was not long after that until he discovered the technique of airbrushing, which along with freehand painting, he was able to carve out his unique and now iconic style. His style was very influenced also by the nightmares that he had had as a child. And while his major breakthrough was with the influence of his book Necronomicon, published in 1977, which provided the visual style of Ridley Scott's seminal film Alien, it was really with brain salad surgery that he first became noticed. So how did the band end up finding this then obscure, very odd artist? Well, Emerson recalls becoming aware of Geiger when the band's Zurich promoter, um, Gustav Zumsteg, insisted in driving Emerson to Geiger's house. And Emerson described Geiger's house as overpowering, gothic to the extreme, that from floor to ceiling he had transformed a simple room into a cathedral, and that even his toilet actually had hands on it where you would sit, these creepy looking hands. And so Emerson was certainly aware that they hadn't got any artwork for the album that they were working on, which was then titled Whip Some Skull On You. And this is a colloquial phrase meaning fellatio. And Emerson, feeling that Geiger's artwork would be perfect, ended up bringing Cole Palmer and Greg Lake, the other two members of the trio, to Geiger's house to show them what Geiger was all about. And they were more reluctant than Keith to take up this creepy gothic artwork. But without any real alternative for a cover, they decided to go along with it. Lake saw at Geiger's house an airbrushing of a woman's face and was instantly intrigued. The face depicted a woman with her eyes closed and a penis protruding towards her closed lips. Indeed, this, this is Geiger after all. And Geiger, noticing Greg's interest in the painting, exclaimed that this was in fact his wife. Um, it's certainly an odd turn of events. And while Sumsteg and Geiger did a deal on using both the skull, which they had seen earlier, and the face of the woman for the album cover, the record label was, let's say, not the happiest in the world about the idea of a record label with a penis protruding towards a woman's lips. So, you know, viewing it as obscene and pornographic, um, Geiger agreed that he would airbrush away the penis, instead turning it into a beam of light, which is a lot less offensive. Now, the cover of Brain Salad Surgery it is immediately distinct in that it features 
as opposed to a traditional gatefold. It features a front cover split down the middle, aside from sort of a circular portal in the centre, which is attached to the right half. So it really consists of two covers, the cover over the top and then the cover which one then reveals. The first cover depicts a monochromatic biomechanical skull with the ELP logo at the bottom. Now this was the first appearance of the ELP logo since it was created by Geiger for the band. And I think it's a really cleverly done logo. It uses this circular enclosure of the letters E rounded up to P and then sort of the vertical lines of P and the bottom of L to become this central column. It's a really elegant, really minimalist looking logo and the effective balance in it just makes it instantly recognisable, instantly iconic and you know something that you're happy to wear on a t-shirt. Whereas the skull appears to be locked into some form of mechanical chamber, I would almost say, covered then by the circular portal through which we can see the mouth and lower face of the one below. Though this portal does not truly reveal the painting beneath since it is its, its own painting, it's not like it's a circle just um, seeing, which allows you to see through to the, the painting underneath. Uh, instead, it is its, its own thing based on the painting underneath. And really, this sinister, gothic image of a biomechanical skull possessing kind of half of a flesh-covered face is a rather strange fit for the music present on this album, and doesn't really coincide with any of the musical or lyrical themes um, that are explored by uh, Lake and, and the band, as, as Lake once remarked. Now when you get to the inner cover, this features a whole human-like face, as hinted at in the first image. A woman which we, I guess, can in retrospect describe as alien-like, with certainly her hair, um, which is almost like kind of mechanical snakes from some form of sci-fi medusa. And her face has this stern and emotionless quality to it, perhaps as if cryogenically frozen in the skeletal chamber adorning the album, with multiple scars or cracks upon her face. However, despite the work and effort put into these wonderful pieces of art, according to Geiger, the band actually never paid his bill for the artwork, which is a bit of a douche move on ELP's part. Though, weirdly, it's not like these very detailed pictures actually took him very long, because the incredible work ethic that Geiger had as a painter. So inspired by Greg and the band's like for the skull images and the woman, as well as the uh, working titles, kind of skull slash fellatio references, he painted a new piece approximately the size of an LP cover, which was certainly a rarity for Geiger, whose pieces were often enormous in scope. And this was completed in two days. That's all it took, which is an astounding feat considering the detail employed. But the speed can really be explained with reference to his technique. He would fill an airbrush with mainly black, sometimes white, and he painted purely in, in monochrome at this point. Then he'd tack a canvas to the wall, and he'd just paint from one end to the other until he got to the other end, um, without any guidelines, any plans, just from his vision in his mind of the piece. And some reports said a guy could just go days or without eating or drinking, just consumed with painting. Geiger unfortunately passed away at age 74 in 2014 as a result of injuries sustained in a fall. So we may now wonder what has become of the original paintings for Emerson, Lake and Palmer's Brain Salad Surgery. The answer is that nobody's quite sure. The paintings were last seen at an exhibition of Geiger's in 2005 at the National Technical Museum of Prague in the Czech, the Czech Republic. When the show closed in August 31st, 2005, the paintings, they, well, they were still safely in place. And then after the show was taken down and the art stored in a locked room in the museum, it appeared fine. But then on September 5th, as the truck with the art arrived at the Geiger Museum in Gruyers, Switzerland, it was discovered that two of the paintings were missing. 
these two paintings were titled Work 217 and Work 218, and were two works that formed Emerson, Lake and Palmer's brain cell surgery. A reward of $10,000 was offered with the chance of no criminal proceedings as long as the works were um, returned. But no one has ever claimed the reward, and the paintings have yet to be recovered. This has been the Alba Man. Thank you for watching this episode of Rock Art, and I'd like to dedicate this episode to H.R. Geiger, Keith Emerson, and Greg Lake. Rest in peace. And as usual, long live rock and roll.